We are Celebrate Church. And as I was in here, it's funny, um, I came home last, last Sunday, last Monday, and I told Jennifer, I said, I, I just got to go, I felt like this way, I said, I just need to go up to the churches, pray to God, get some stuff. You know, I, you, know you always have something kind of in your back pocket or through your devotions or that the Lord kind of is speaking to you and you can, I said, I'm just, I'm just going to come up here. And so most days I can come up here for a couple of hours, I just, I'm just going to use it. Right there, this chair, in between you guys, okay? You're going to get something in because they don't. <laughs> and I, you know, and I just said, I'm just going to come up and pray until I hear something. And uh, I heard something. So, uh, and it's simple. i got uh, three or four pages, that's it, okay? I want to talk about celebration, celebrate. And uh, it's what the Lord wants us to do. To talk about. We are Celebrate Church. And I felt like I'm saying, you know what? You guys need to live up to your name. You need to live up to your name. You gotta call yourself Celebrate Church. Y'all yeah. live up to it. Um, if not, then let's change the name. Okay? Um, there's all kinds of names you can do. My dog is bigger than your dog first. <laughs> you never, you know. You can call it whatever you want, but we're celebrating church. And uh, so I want to talk about this for a few minutes. And, and it's important to remember who we are. Why we start. Why we're here in the first place. Why is, you know, who are we? We're celebrating church. Um, celebrate means this. This is thanks to the dictionary. We may we probably all have our own picture. Uh, but it means to observe or commemorate with festivities. Okay? To make known, to proclaim, to praise publicly. I'm going to celebrate. Man, touch down. Woo! <laughs> celebrate. Awesome. Way to go. Um, it means to participate in a party and to have a good time. Okay? I always thought Cool the Game celebration song should have been our theme song for the church. Um, there's a party going on right here. Okay? I'm serious. Years ago, it's, I'm going to give you guys a little history. Years ago, we, uh, we made some flyers before we ever started the church. Okay, I think I had one left in my possession at all, almost. Um, we had, I don't know how many thousand of these, and we'd go door to door and that kind of thing. And we'd tell people about the church that was started. Um, let the celebration begin. Everybody always thought that was my dad, but it's not. I don't know who that is. Um, and so we go around, let the celebration begin. And I'm going to show you what, uh, what the inside looks like. You guys can see everybody but family. Um, and so we started off at Celebrate Family Church of Northwest Arkansas. And uh, you know what you want to know what we're about? We're about celebrating Christ, family, and community. We show up here, and that's, that's, what we're, that's what we celebrate. We celebrate Christ, because there's nobody better to celebrate. We celebrate the family. We try to build, we want to build strong families. And we want to, we want to it's, and help and instill those kind of things. And then we're going to, we probably need to do this better. There's a lot of great things going on in our community. We don't have to come up with everything on our own. There's a lot of great things going on in our community, and we ought to be a part of celebrating them. Um, it's that's what we're about celebrating those things. Let me show you the inside because this is kind of fun. Um, celebrate Christ, celebrate family, celebrate community. Man, we love y'all, especially Taylor and Parker. Parker got quite a smile. Mom and Dad, you look like models. Kind of perfect. Man, you know, we've changed a little bit. And we've added something. Celebrate. Who do we, what are we about? We celebrate who? Christ? Help me out, because I must get this. This is important because this needs to help shape the rest of the future. We celebrate Christ when we come together. Man, we, it's all about lifting Jesus up. 
Um, we celebrate, we're not just celebrating his church, we're not celebrating this church, we're celebrating Jesus. Okay? We're celebrating Christ, we're celebrating family. And it means you. Okay? Um, man, when uh, Steve has a birthday on Tuesday and we mention it, praise God. That's important to all of us. And uh, we celebrate Steve. Uh, we celebrate the family. We celebrate our community. The good things in the community are happening. And we're proud of it. And we want to be a blessing to our community as well. Um, those were fun to, to make and actually look back at this week. Um, let me read to you a few verses. These are some of the verses that kind of shape who we are. 2 Samuel 6.21 says, I will celebrate. David says, I will celebrate. I'm determined I'm going to do it. I will celebrate before the Lord, he says. And this is a picture of uninhabited, kind of, of basically an uninhabited good time. Okay? His wife's going, what are you doing? You're too, you're too happy. You're, you're making, you're embarrassing me. Okay? And he's like, well, forget you. Okay, I'm celebrating. I, he's worthy of praise. The ark's coming back in. And I'm, David's dancing in his skinnies. Okay? We're not going to encourage that. Ever. Okay? Around here. But, it's uninhibited. Man, he's praising God. He's having a party. He's celebrating. And it's such a celebration that he's kind of getting criticized for. Because it's not just a, oh, this is really great. No, it stood out. It was different. It was celebrating. He said, I will celebrate. For the Lord. And then listen to what um, I like this out of the Message Bible, Revelation 19, 7. And it's when they're surrounding the, uh, the throne. Okay? It's right there at the end. It's awesome. Um, and, and the voice says, Let us celebrate. And in the Message Bible, it says this Let us celebrate. Let us rejoice. Let us give him the glory. Let us celebrate. Let us rejoice. Let us give him the glory. Now, I want you to know that celebration is biblical. All right? It's a discipline as well. It is a trained and a maintained behavior for a believer. You have to learn how to celebrate. And you have to maintain it. It should be a part of our, our behavior as believers. Biblical worship involves both celebration and there is also in worship a, an aspect of confession when we, when we worship. But when God established Israel's national holidays... Okay? These were days of celebration. They were for the purpose of worship. And I want you to know that the, per the balance of those seven days was heavily tipped in the favor of parties and celebration. In fact, five to two. Okay? Five of them were celebratory, two of them were kind of somber. But they were days of worship and they were days of celebration. Now, here's the question. I wonder how well we do it live at living according to that ratio. Five to two. Um, God wants us and encourages us to celebrate. And actually, He commands it. He commands it. In fact, we say this, we've said this since the beginning. You were born to celebrate. You were born to celebrate. Religion shouldn't be, and church shouldn't be, all heavy. No. I got at least one person agrees with that. Religion, church, when we come, it, there are times where it should be. Definitely. Definitely. We need those times. But it should all be heavy. Okay? More often than not, when we come together, it ought to revolve around celebration. Christians have the most to celebrate. If anybody has a reason to celebrate, it's with me. I mean, when we come together, I mean, we really need to work on this. When we come into worship, we got to get the, the uh, traditional mindset of, of church. We just kind of need to boot some of it out the, the door. And if you're going to go to the amp and you're going to get into it, you ought to come here and get into it. Because we got reason to celebrate. I'm telling you, it really happened. He died on a cross for you, and you didn't have to. You don't have to go to hell. That's good news. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go to hell. I mean, we got reason to party. I mean, there is good reason to celebrate. Now, let's all be just totally honest. I mean, seriously. 
Christians aren't known for their partying. <laughs> oh man, I'm telling you, I just couldn't get to bed last night. Those Christians next door were at it again. <laughs> I had a bunch of Christians, laughter, music, dancing. I mean, the party in that house, it never ends. I have never heard that. Maybe we need it. But did you know Jesus enjoyed a good party? In fact, he sought them out. He went to them. He talked about them. He had a good time at them. When you turn to Luke 14 and 15, it all takes place, those two chapters, is written in the context or the theme of parties and celebrating. And so, you know, the, the uh, lost sheep, the, lo the lost son, the lo all these things. It's written in this theme of a party and celebrating. Someone has referred to those two chapters as the Christian's guide to party. The question isn't if a Christian should celebrate. See, the world's given us this definition of party when I say that it was their party. Okay? The question isn't if a Christian should celebrate. Jesus just assumes we're gonna. It's how we celebrate. And it's what we celebrate that matters. God gets great joy. I'm just telling you, he gets a kick out of it. He loves it when we come and there's an uninhibited yet wholesome celebration. You can be uninhibited and be wholesome. Okay? When it comes to celebrating for the believer, for Jesus, it's all about throwing a party that gives life. That's what it's about. It's about giving a party that just brings life into people. All right? Um, a celebration does several things. It's fun. Should be, at least. <laughs> I said, a party ought to be fun. I mean, you ought to just have a good time. You ought to be laughing. You ought to uh, leave going, man, that was a good time. We need to do that again. That's When I go to a party, and it was a good party, that I enjoy it. food. I mean, it, it's fun. All right? Um, a celebration, it also does this. It's not just fun, but sometimes a celebration reminds us of things. That was the purpose of the National Holidays for Israel. Okay? Um, when we have a celebration, sometimes it reminds birthday. It reminds us of his birth. Okay. July 4th, man, we all like to have a celebration. It reminds us of our independence. Something very important. January 3rd. It reminds us of something. A special day. And the celebration does this. It expresses value, doesn't it? When we celebrate someone or something, it expresses worth and value and accomplishment. You know, if I, when you, well, I love they brought the celebration back to the NFL, although I don't watch it this year. <laughs> but you know, they come back, man, those guys score a touchdown. I remember the Dallas Cowboys when I was a kid. I remember Roger Stahl. Remember that guy? Man, I, I hate Terry Bradshaw still. Okay, no, <laughs> man, I remember the Dallas Cowboys. All those guys that I remember was Butch Johnson used to have this heat score touchdown. He'd do that in the end zone, man. He's one of the first ones. I thought, man, I like that guy. He was awesome, man. He could score at the party. They, they express accomplishment and value. Something happens when you and I celebrate. All right? Something really happens anytime and anywhere. Something happens that doesn't happen anywhere else. When we celebrate, here's what really happens. It starts to build doors. It opens doors and it builds bridges. Okay? It builds bridges between people. It really we, one time we had a Christmas party at our house with people we didn't know. We just invited them. In our neighborhood. We kind of met them once or twice, most of them, and they showed up. It was the weirdest thing in the world. And we had a Christmas. Somebody brought his guitar and played. It was bizarre. But it was awesome. It built bridges. We still see them. And they're like, I don't know. That's fun. So it builds bridges, it opens doors, and it deepens relationships. Now, when Jesus was describing the kingdom of God, you know, he does that a lot. And in one situation, he's defining and he's describing what the kingdom of God is like. And he implies that it was a banquet. Okay? And a banquet is basically just a lavish party. All right? It's a lavish celebration. And so he says the kingdom of God is this banquet or this celebration, and God is inviting everyone to be a part of it. It's a party. It's a celebration. 
and it involves you, and it involves me. In fact, you weren't just born to celebrate. I like this. God actually celebrates us. He celebrates us. Listen to what this says. Now, everybody probably has this embroidered somewhere, or put on a pillow, or uh, memorized by heart. Zephaniah. Some of you are like, I didn't know that's in the Bible. <laughs> Zephaniah. Sounds like somebody I was cool with. Zephaniah 3, 17. says this. And this is out of God's Word translation. I like this. It says, the Lord your God is with you. Amen? Yeah. He is a hero who saves you. Amen? Yeah. He happily rejoices over you. God happily rejoices over you. He renews you with his love. And I like this. And he celebrates over you with shouts of joy. I don't like that. Now, the phrase rejoices over you or celebrates over you, look it up. Here's what it literally means. Dance. Or skip. Anybody used to skip? I saw some kids go, I just want to skip. I just, you can't skip and be sad. It's impossible. It just, I can't even fake it. Okay? So that, word, that phrase means dance, skip, to leap, and to spin in joy. That's what that phrase literally means. So can you imagine? God is literally dancing over you, leaping, spinning over you with shouts of joy. What's a shout of, shout of joy sound like? Everybody test me out. Hey! Hey! Woo! <laughs> yeah! That was awesome! Okay? You know what the shout of a flat tire sounds like? Yeah. Uh. Bummer. You know, there's certain things that are opposite. He shouts for joy over you. And you know what that tells me? Here's what that tells me. It tells me you matter. You're valued. Everyone in this room, you count. You're important to God. Now, fewer and fewer people are brought up in families that cultivate a sense of worth. Fewer and fewer people outside those doors are brought up in or even live in families that value its members like they should. Sometimes, instead of being treated as valued, sometimes wives, husbands, kids, family members, parents that are no, you know, that are getting older, sometimes people are treated as problems. They really are. And that's why being a part of the family of God is so important. See, that's why being a part of this family of God is so important. That's why we're glad you're here and you matter. Part of this, the responsibility of the family of God is to cultivate God value in each person. See, part of our responsibility when, um, when Bobby shows up on any given Sunday is for the rest of us as the body of Christ to express value and to celebrate her. I don't mean we throw a party every single week, right? But you ought to come going, man, those people care for me, those people love me, and I'm, I'm valued. Yeah. Yeah. And everyone ought to sense that, no matter how big it gets. That's part of what we, we, we value people like God values them. And then we instill that. We make sure, we may know that when they come the first time, they may not even be aware of it. They may not be Emma may show up. Somebody like Emma, okay? They don't understand their value in God. They live in a home where they don't feel valued. But they come to their part of this and they begin to learn that she's important. Not just to God, but to us. Jack Hayford said this. I like this too. Every person is a case of Planned Parenthood. Every person is a case of Planned Parenthood. God planned you. God planned you. You are valued. You're worth everything to him. So much so he said his son. Alright? You have, you need to know this, everyone in this room, if I could go to one in every room, you have significance. So here's what happened. As I was praying and asking God for direction today, in that chair, this week, excuse me, not today, this week, um, I asked him this question. This is 
seriously, like, Jesus, if you were in charge today, then I was like, well, I, he's like, I am. Okay. I think that's really the check I had in my heart. Jesus, if you were in charge today, you know, I, I mean, here I am on my knees, what do you want to do? I mean, if, if, if you just could do anything Sunday, what would you do? You want to know what he said? He said, well, I'd throw a party. I said, that sounds good to me. <laughs> I like parties. The church needs to party more. Um, now, probably the most common celebrations are what? Probably for most people. A birthday, maybe? Okay? Like Steve, we mentioned him. Um, so today we're throwing a birthday party. Okay? We're throwing a birthday party. See, there it is. And here's what happens. When a person understands and realizes that God celebrates over them. You need to understand this. Every one of you young people look at me. God, Brian, God's up in heaven just doing that, having a heyday. Mm -hmm. Woo, I like that girl. <laughs> oh, man, baby, pray today. Woo, that was awesome. I heard it. Did you guys hear Gabriel, come over here. Stop everything. <laughs> baby, going to pray. I mean, it's like that. I mean, it's, it's amazing. But when a person understands and realizes that God celebrates over them, all of a sudden what happens is they begin to understand the significance of their birth. I mean, I'm telling you folks, you value God. So every birthday in your family, you ought to just, you ought to have fun. You ought to celebrate that person. They're valued, okay? So what better party if Jesus wants us to have a party, then have a birthday party. So I determined that uh, today we're going to live up to our name. Okay? We're celebrating church, and uh, we're going to celebrate. Now, here's, he, he went down when I was praying, okay? Because he specifically told me there's somebody we're supposed to celebrate. Okay? So I'm praying, and it's just weird, as you don't know, normally you expect like Go to John 316. <laughs> yeah, or something like that. You want to feel it in your heart. It's like, have a party. <laughs> I don't know. It's, like, it's different. Okay? And, and it just is, I knew in my heart that it, 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 he told me who we're supposed to celebrate. I don't have any question about it. Okay? And, and, and this is what's cool, is God thinks enough of us to actually go, hey, I want you to celebrate that person. Yes. Isn't it cool? Yes. Okay. So here's who it is. Veronica. Yes. But 
the point is that God's wanting to communicate is to remember who we are. You know what people like coming to a party, quite honestly. Anybody like going to funerals? No. Not me. I hate them. Okay, I don't even want to go to my own. <laughs> 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 no chance. I just did not go. <laughs> so what we're gonna have a party. Okay, and I need Jennifer to help me. Or actually you girls help me. Yeah, you girls help me. Let's do this. Uh, Veronica, come here. Are you embarrassed? You are special. 
you are valued. And there's a group of people who think you're awesome. Yes. And we love you. Yes. And we're a glad group of people that you're here with us. Yes. Um, that's important to us. And uh, it's important to express that. I think it's pretty neat that God, I've never had to do that. I've never done this in my whole 20 some years of pastoring or anything. Uh, but just clear as I, I knew. That was pretty cool. So think about it. God was thinking about you, I think it was Thursday. Uh, he thinks about you every day. <laughs> <laughs> God was thinking about you Thursday, the rest of the week. <laughs> he thinks about you every day. Thursday, I was sitting there, I'm just telling you, it was just that clear. So God actually was like, Throw a party for Veronica. Yeah. So, I want you guys, we're done early, okay? Uh, we're going to have a lot of fun. And when we walk out of those doors in just a minute, there's a table, okay, that uh, the girls have decorated, and it, it looks great. Um, and there's some beautiful cupcakes. Um, we want you guys to just kind of hang out, make sure you get to love on her a little bit, and tell her how special she is. Some of you have brought some cards, I know, and then... I also wanted to do this. I want to encourage you, if you didn't get a text, or didn't hear from me, or didn't have an opportunity, there's some cards right here that say happy birthday on them. On the back, they're blank. What would be really cool, I, I treasure some things like this you guys have done for me. I have them in my closet. I look at them. Um, I have to get underneath a whole bunch of stuff to find them. <laughs> <laughs> but I want you to just be right in one of your favorite scriptures. A, a note of encouragement on the back of, the, of these. Sometimes those are just awesome to pull out. And say, oh man, that's awesome. And uh, just take one of these if you didn't already write a card or if you want to do both. I'm going to put them up here. Um, and I'm going to play um, our theme song as we exit. Yeah, right. yeah. um, to, the, to the entrance. And I want you to hang out. I want you to greet each other. I want you to have some cupcakes. If you brought a card, I want you to give it to her.